I have decided to do my paper on Ellen Gates Starr, who was an American social reformer and activist. Ellen Gates Starr was born on March 19, 1859 in Leona, Illinois, to her parents Caleb Allen Starr and Susan Gates Child. She was the third children born out of four. When Ellen was young, she was persuaded by her aunt, Eliza Allen Starr, to enroll at the Rockford Female Seminary. And Ellen took her aunt's advice and she enrolled as a student at the cemetery. Um, this is where she would later become acquainted with her lifelong friend, Jane Adams. Ellen was only able to attend the seminary for one year because her family could not afford the tuition after that year. So she left seminary and she went on to teach at a school in Mount Morris, Illinois for about a year before she left again to teach at an all-girls school in Chicago called Miss Kirkland's School in 1879. Ellen taught at Miss Kirkland's School for about 10 years um, before she decided that she wanted to take a little break from teaching and perhaps even travel. So Ellen Gates Starr and Jane Addams had remained friends while, um, even though Ellen had left seminary about 10 years ago, they still remained in contact and were still friends. So Jane Addams invited um, Ellen to go on a trip with her to Europe in 1888. And while they were traveling in Europe, they stopped to visit a social settlement, settlement house in London where young people work together towards social reform by living amongst the poor people in the area. Um, the place that they had visited was a university settlement house that had been started by Samuel Barnett, who wanted to help the poor people that lived in the area that the university was located. Um, this settlement house was called Toynbee Hall and is the world's first recorded settlement house. A settlement house is just where um, people don't just volunteer their time, as in like an hour or two a day, to go help the poor, but they live among them to help them out. So they live together. Um, so seeing a settlement house in London inspired Ellen and Jane Addams, and they wanted to impact society in the same way and help the people in their community. So they were inspired to open one their, themselves. Uh, they liked the idea of living among the poor instead of just volunteering their time. And they saw the respect that the people who were living in poverty had for the people who gave up their lifestyles to help them in better society. So they realized all the benefits and the impact that they could make in the urban community and in their area just by opening something like this for the people in the area. In 1889, Ellen Gates Starr and Jane Addams began their search for the ideal place to open a settlement house in Chicago. A little bit later, they came across a rundown mansion and they saw that it was very spacious and full of potential. If they just restored it and fixed it up a bit, it would be able to turn the women's dreams into a reality. Um, so in September of 1889, they moved into the old mansion and they officially opened the first settlement house that has been recorded in America. It was open on the west side of the city where many immigrants were living and working. And these immigrants were living in overcrowded and unsanitary conditions. And um, this settlement house became to be known as Hull House because it had been built by Charles J. Hull. For the next 30 years, um, Ellen spent her time as the principal coordinator of cultural activities at the Hull House. She wanted the children who lived there and in the community to expand their knowledge as well as continue to stay in touch with their roots since they were the children of immigrants or immigrants themselves. And she came up with many fun activities for the children at the house to participate in um, to help her reach her goals of expanding their knowledge and staying in touch with their roots. Um, Ella knew that many of the people who lived in the community where the whole house was located didn't have running water or indoor plumbing, and she and Jane Adams wanted to make um, help out with the sanitation. So when babies in the area needed a bath or cleaning up, they took them in and um, cleaned them up and washed them. Um, the two women also tended to the community, those in the community that were sick, and they even helped to prepare dead bodies for burial. And in doing tasks like this in the community, the two women, they earned the respect and they gained the trust of those that they were living among. Um, and soon many other people began to volunteer their time and services to help out um, for the community and at Hull House. There were also volunteers who began to teach English to the immigrants in the community who had not yet learned the language of their new country. Along with this, they began to help the unemployed find jobs. 
And since Ellen wanted to be able to reach people of all ages, she and Jane Addams started social activities for um, elderly people in the area as well so that they wouldn't be left out. Um, Ellen also went on to make a kindergarten for the children at Hull House and those living in the community. And they also built a playground for the kids um, in the area. Um, later, in later years, um, 12 new buildings were added to the house. And these add-on buildings included a library, a cafeteria, a music school, a theater, and a gymnasium. And everyone who came into Hull House that would normally be looked down upon because of their social um, status or their poverty, they were welcomed with support and opportunity and they were treated with respect just as if they were, as they deserved to be treated as a human. The Hull House became a model house for other people in America who wished to make a difference in their areas and communities. Um, and within a few decades, a lot of other people were inspired by the Hull House and the example it set to open settlement houses throughout America to help the other urban poor in the cities. Um, so Ellen's concern for the well-being of children soon also moved to their concern, her concern about um, their well-being in the workplace. She knew that a lot of immigrant children were working long hours in um, many times dangerous conditions in order to help provide for their family. She knew that the parents were working long hours in the same conditions and that the children were expected to do the same um, no matter their age. And because many of these children and their parents did not speak English, or at least they did not speak it very well, they were unable to get decent jobs. Um, and th these facts inspired Ellen to become an activist for child labor as well as just um, labor issues in general. And she wanted to see that the immigrants that were living in poverty receiving better wages and have their employers providing safer working conditions for them as well. In 1894, Ellen founded the Chicago Public School Art Society, and she was also quoted as saying that people who worked at an art or a craft were happier and more rational beings. Because she felt this way, she wanted to provide um, arts and crafts for the factory workers to help them become happier people in general. They worked long hours to provide, and often they were still stuck in poverty, and she thought that if she was able to you know, share the arts and help them work at a craft, that they could at least enjoy that part of their lives. So in 1897, Ellen opened the Chicago chapter of the Arts and Crafts Society, and that was modeled after the British Arts and Crafts Movement. Um, she also went to England for about 15 months to learn the art of bookbinding, and when she came back, that was another thing that she wanted to teach the people at Hull House. So she began teaching the art of bookbinding, and um, she had a reputation of being a master crafts person. She also included other activities such as exhibitions, lectures, and evening classes for adults and children in um, subjects such as ceramics and woodworking. The next thing that Ellen did was open a labor museum that allowed immigrant workers to display their handiwork and their craft skills. Ellen accomplished this and it was very uplifting for the immigrants and it was also a way for the immigrant children to be proud of their parents. So her main goal for all of her art endeavors was to make art a part of the everyday lives of people and also to make it a permanent fixture in the public school system. Starr joined um, the Socialist Party and was a member of the Women's Trade Union League and the Dorcas Federal Labor Union. She also helped to organize strikes for garment and textile workers throughout the, her years. And not only did she give motiv motivational speeches for her fellow union members, but she also provided food, water, and clothes for those that she knew were in need of it. Even though she accomplished all of this, she still did not stop there. She was standing side by side with the factory workers when they were on strike. And even once she was arrested because of her involvement in a strike uh, for restaurant workers. For many years of her life, Ellen was searching for religious truth, and she joined the Episcopal Church in 1884. And her aunt, who had um, convinced her to uh, enroll in the Rockford Female Seminary, um, it is probable that she also convinced Ellen to join the Catholic Church in 1920. And sometimes the Catholic Church was not very pleased with her involvement in strikes or other things she did that could shed a negative light on the church. 
Ellen continued to work, but she was interrupted um, in her work at the Hull House in 1929 when she had to have an operation to remove um, an abscess that she had on her spine. The surgery left Ellen paralyzed from the waist down, and this disability led to her retiring in 1930 to the Catholic Convent of the Holy Child in Suffren, New York, and she became an oblate of the Third Order of St. Benedict. Then on, on, I'm sorry, on February 10, 1940, Ellen passed away at the age of 80 in Suffern, New York at the convent. And that is also where she was buried. Ellen was a woman who truly gave her everything in order to help those around you, around her. She was selfless and hardworking, and yet more often than not, I feel like she is overlooked. Jane Addams is the one who rose to fame in the world of social activism, and she is also the woman who is remembered as founding the Hull House. I think it is important to know that Jane Addams would not have been um, su as successful or have been able to open and operate the Hull House at the level of success that it achieved without Ellen Gates Starr, because um, she poured in hard work, effort, and dedication, and that is what led to it operating at such a level of success. Um, she did not just give her efforts part-time or volunteer a couple hours of her week, but rather she gave up her wealthy lifestyle um, that she had once known in order to fully submerse herself into the life of the poor immigrants so that she could earn their trust and respect and help them as best as she could. Ellen opened up many doors of opportunity for immigrants who were living in the Chicago area with her creative and unique teaching style. Um, her concern for their well-being and for her, her never-ending generosity. She knew that she was not going to be able to make life better for all immigrant workers, but she knew that even if she was able to make the smallest impact in her community, it would make a po positive impact on the society in which she lived. I think that Ellen um, was given much joy by involving herself in the arts, and she wanted to bring that joy to other people as well who wouldn't have been able to experience that without her help. Um, she wanted to help the poor forget about their situation of living under the poverty line for at least a short while, that while they were working at a craft or working in an arts class. And she wanted to help get their minds off of the, their tough times and their situations and to let them have an outlet in watching art performances or being a part of the performances or learning new craft trades that they could do themselves. Ellen Gates Starr was a, one, a wonderful woman who changed the history of this nation. Without the work that she did, poor immigrant workers may have never gotten the helping hand that they needed, and their children may have had to continue working long hours in unsafe conditions. She had truly impacted society for the better. Um, in my PowerPoint presentation, there's also a link to a YouTube video. Um, if you'd want to check that out, it's a bit long, but I thought it was a, a good video to watch for a summary of this. Thank you.